In this shot, you're going to drop gumballs into the cup you just modeled. To do this, you want to create a bunch of gumballs sitting above the cup. Using a box and then scattering points onto the box, you can get a nice collection of gumballs. So let's start. Um, we've got our network set up. Let's just collapse that back down so we can use the parameter pane. And we're going to go here and press C, Create Geometry, and we're going to get a sphere. And we're going to press Enter to place that at the origin. Now you notice this jumped us back up to the object level. Uh, the sphere is being created in its own object, and that works for what we're doing here. Now if we double click to get into that, uh, what we're going to do is change this to 0 0.4. Uh, to make it a little smaller. Okay, now we're going to go C, Create, Geometry, and Box. Press Enter to go to the origin. And again, we get another object. So that's fine. That's fine. So let's uh, double click to go into it. And in this case, we're going to change its size to 0 0.75, 5, and 0 0.75. Now, once we've got that, let's just go and double click and go tab match size. And we're going to go and say, let's get the minimum there. And then we're going to do an offset of three. So that lifts the box up. So if we actually go, you'll see that there it is floating above like that. Now, let's go back to the object level. Now, making sure nothing is selected, let's go to the Modify Shelf and do Copy to Points. So, let's start by selecting the sphere, pressing Enter. Then we're going to select the box and press Enter. And we now have, press 4 to go to Primitive Selection, uh, we have four spheres copied to the corners of that box. Now, when you do this, you always want Pack an Instance to be on, and that's that's important. But you also, uh, this target points we need to set, because if this box, let's say going up here, had more points, um, you see how only eight of them are being copied? That's because the copy to points will only do that. So let's uh, have absolutely nothing in there, and it will copy to all the points. Now we don't particularly need that. Let's let's just change that back to two. Uh, but it's very important to copy to points. Don't get trapped with that target points limiting the number of points that you can you can create. Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to go tab scatter and we're going to put that node just down off to the side. We're going to change the count to sixty. And then we're going to put it between the box and copy to point, so right in there. So once you've got that, we've now got a bunch of scattered points within there, and you can see those scattered points there, and then we've copied spheres onto those. Now to get some interesting effects on that, we're going to go attribute, oh, sorry, attribute randomize. Uh, and we're going to put a node down, and this one takes color and gives you a different color for each of these. So that's pretty cool. Now if we go Tab and Attribute Randomize again and place that down. This time we're going to go P Scale, one of the inherent um, attributes, and now we've got different size of these. Now we don't want them to go that small, so we're going to go 0 0.4 as the smallest. And there we go. we got a bunch of different size gumballs ready to go. Okay, now making sure our timeline is on frame one, what we're going to do is we're going to add a here, node here called RBD Bullet Solver. We're going to place that down, and we're going to put that here, set the display flag. Now on the collision tab, if you scroll to the bottom, you can set a ground ty type of ground plane. I think visualization we can say don't show the ground plane if we don't. We don't need to see that, so that's an option there. Okay, so now we've got that. We're all set up. Let's press play. 
and the gumballs fall down, hit the ground, and disperse. So it's working, except the cup is not part of things. So we see a cup there, but it's not involved. And the reason it's involved is in a, it's in a separate object. As a matter of fact, if we say hide other objects, it's not there. Now we could pretend and say show us all objects, but that's still not there, and you'll see that doesn't make it suddenly show up. Um, so that's not going to do the trick. Go back to ghost. So what we need is we need to bring it into here. So one of the ways to do that is to go up to here, take the cup, and we're going to extract the cup, and that adds a second, uh, another object here. We can then take these two objects and combine them, and we're going to call this object gumballs. Dive into there. Now there's a few nodes we don't need at the moment, so one of them is this display merge, because we're not merging those together right now. What instead we're going to do is we're going to take this object merge that's bringing the cup in and we're going to feed that into the fourth input here. So now when we do that um, it's part of that network. So if we go back to frame one and we press play you'll see oh it comes in and it hits it but it it falls um, it doesn't go into the cup. And that's the reason is because the collision shape is currently set at convex. We want to be concave. Now if we go back and we press play, we're now filling that cup up. That's great. That's perfect. Now we're back at frame one. We're going to go back to the object level. We're going to go back to the cup. We're going to go back to that switch we had and change that back to the old orange cup. So we can go back and forth. We can say, well, we want to work with this one instead. And if we press play at this point, you'll see that it now fills up. So that's pretty good. So we can make changes like that. Uh, we can also do things like, let's go back into here. And let's go back to the box that we originally created. And we're going to change the size here to 10. That's going to make a lot more uh, bigger box. And then we're going to go to the scatter node. And we're going to change this to, let's say, 200. So now we've got a lot more gumballs. Go back to the RBD sol solver. Let's change the bounciness to 1.5 and the friction to 0.6. Um, Try that. And then we can go and press play. And there we go. We fill up the cup and have uh, a lot of it just spilling off to the side. So that gives us a much more interesting result there. Now, if we want to at this point, um, we don't want our, our animation to go 240 frames. So we're going to change that to 72 frames. And then that will make our simulations just a little bit faster. Now, when we play back, it plays back very fast because it's cached. If we click on this button, we'll get a, more of a real-time playback of, of that. And if we want to zoom in, we can get a feel for that. There we go. Now right now everything we've done here is simulated every time we press play except for the fact that it gets cached. But if we were to reopen the scene we would have to recache it in order to move forward. So another option here is to right click on the output of here and go file cache. And we're going to select the, that, that there. Now what this will allow us to do is let's give it a name of gumballs. It's going to go into the geo folder. This is uh, version 1. We don't need versions. Let's turn versions off. Uh, and we're going to go save to disk. Now it thinks it through and then it once it finishes, which was fairly fast because we'd already cached things, uh, it then loads it from disk. So now we can scrub back and forth through there and it's, it's all really super fast because we're not simulating at all. Um, it's all, all working off of that cache. So that gives us a good sort of endpoint where we've got all of that stuff working together. And then we can just, um, let's just do one more playback before we move on to the next stage. And there we go.